podcast, World Hustle, the recognized symbol of excellence in sports entertainment. these things want and why are they here you still don't get it do you boy? they have recruited the rich and the powerful they're running the whole show wake up they're all about you all around you blind on us to the truth take a look they are safe as long as they are not discovered i don't know what they are or where they came from but we gotta no, stop them stay away from me put these on they have us look at them they're everywhere We have no other choice. I don't like this one bit. Leave it alone, man. It ain't none of my business, ain't none of yours. We have been lulled into a trance. Listen to what I'm saying to you. We're in trouble. The whole world's in trouble. Control us! You're sending some kind of signals on the TV sets. I've got one that can see. Mama don't like tattletale. Now we start spilling some blood. Let's go! Push I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick it. And I'm all out of bubble gum. What's wrong with having it good for a change? Now they're gonna let us have it good if we just help them. They're gonna leave us alone. Let's make some money. You can have a little taste of that good life too. Now I know you want it. Hell, everybody does. You do it to your own kind. What's the threat? We all sell out every day. Might as well be on the winning team. The Oscar winners give a press conference and how to buy a sailboat as Gloria, Prime News. Like shit. I'm on it. What's wrong? All the sex and violence on the screen has gone too far for me. I'm fed up with it. Filmmakers like George Romero and John Carpenter have to show some restraint. They're simply... You're filled with lightning when you hit the road. You're feeling that V6 power as you take control. Nothing can suck you down. You're moving on. Hey, what's wrong, baby? The PW Hustle Networks present PWR at the Movies. Join the professor, Tommy Wonder, and JB as they discuss the greatest pro wrestling moments in movie history. What is going on there, Reflectionites? Welcome back. We are back at the movies here in the boardrooms of the PW Hustle Networks at Podbean.com. Yes, it's episode three. It is October. It is movie month. Wrestling movie month here on the PWR, the Pro Wrestling Reflection, whatever you want to call it. You know what? We wanted to entertain the Magnificent Seven, the Elite Eight, the Naughty Nine, the Terrific Ten, the Ghost Babies. The, the UFC guy, DeMarco, John McEugan, Sarah Jane, the SNX Express, you know who you are, H-Track Black, Philip Scott Wood, Donna Destruction, even though he's on a social media break and a pod bean break, it's okay, Don, I, I will forgive you, I know you're going to binge listen in the next couple of weeks and you'll have like hours and hours of entertainment, but that's what we're trying to do here at the PW Also Network, so we're going back to the movies, we're, we got the 50-inch pro- Plasma TV, we got the beers, we got the sodas, we got the shrimp cocktails, we got the blow, we got some crank, we got some ecstasy, we got meth, I don't know, we we got a dime a dozen of drugs and hookers, I don't know, it's just, it, it's, it's crazy timing, it's 2020, you know what it is, we don't, we can't even call it, but you know what, since this is movie month here at the PWR Network, PWR Podcast, we already did No Holds Barred. We already did Ready to Rumble. 
we wanted to pay homage to a wrestler who had a starring role and really changed the complexity of wrestlers as actors in Hollywood. And we must, we must talk about this one particular movie because it tipped the scales. Yes, we know that Hulk Hogan was Thunderlips in Rocky III. Yes, we know Hulk Hogan had a, did an episode or two for the A-Team. And yes, that was the springboard. But let's not forget in Hollywood, it wasn't Jesse Ventura who had a starring role. It was this man, Roddy Roddy Piper. Not, no, we're not going to talk about Body Slam. I know y'all want to you know, talk about Body Slam, but that's another time. But we want to talk about a movie that resonates in 2020. We want to talk about a movie that warned y'all. All you sleepy motherfuckers out there who are still going to vote Republican, who are still going to re- vote Democrat, who are still asleep at the wheel, who are still slaves to the system of a two-party domination. Yes. We are going to talk about They Live from 1988, starring your friend and mine, resting in heaven, Roddy, Roddy Piper. But you know my spiel here. I got to introduce myself. I am, well, I'm not the fat one. I'm going to be the skinny one. I think I'm Siskel, but I'm the Siskel of the PWR bunch here. You know, my, my cohort in crime, he's got more of the belly than I do, so I have to be the Siskel. So I'm the Gene Siskel. I am the magnanimous one. I am the scholarly one. But most importantly, I am the glorious one. The only objective man in the IWC, YWC. The only objective man in politics. The only objective man on this planet Earth. Your friend and mine, the Professor Chabela Cruz. But I'm not here all alone. I'm not here watching the movie by myself. I'm not here, you know, snorting the blow. I am here with my cohort in crime, the Gorilla Monsoon, the Roger Ebert of the PWR podcast, the Bob Mackey of the PWR podcast. He's got a lot of, you know, AKAs, the man with the most popular grinder page out in social media. He's the conservative liberal. He is your friend of mine, Mr. Wonderful Tommy Strong, and he's holding an action figure of Roddy Roddy Piper, the hot rod with the kilt, with the red, with the white shirt. And a moving arm, Tommy Wonder. Welcome to episode three of the uh, PWR Goes to the Movies. How are you doing, my friend? Hey, hey, yo, what do you mean episode three? Have we done movies before, haven't we, or no? No. Uh, we're, no, no you we're, did one when I was on hiatus. I I didn't do a movie. That wasn't me. I want to say this. When you started talking, I didn't know if it was the professor or if it was Humpty from the Digital Underground. Because you were hyped. You were... You didn't get hyped. You stay hyped like that other guy from that one wrestling show. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm 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 drinking a lot of carbonated stuff here, so I'm, it yeah, might be what I'm drinking. Spike yeah. tea. Yep. Yeah, um, yes, it is. You know, it's funny as you did all your talking, it didn't dawn on me. I'm like, what's he talking about? Like, there was a million wrestlers in movies before Piper, but you nailed it. He's the first guy to get the lead. He wasn't a gimmick character like in Rocky Three. He wasn't um, uh, a side. To Schwarzenegger, like in Predator, man, and it probably is his. He's the reason Pe- people might super, well suburban commando. People might debate about Vern Gagne and the wrestler, but we're not talking about a wrestling movie. We're talking about, a, like you said, a wrestler getting a starring role in a thriller or you know a horror, whatever you want to call it. But it, uh, it was this, a, it wasn't a wrestling movie. It was a Hollywood. No. It was John mm-hmm. Carpenter, which I'm going to talk about him throughout this because, of course, you're going to have to. I wish JB was here. That's our movie guy. But I'm just going to say it now. Why is John Carpenter held in such high esteem? Because I'm the next John Carpenter movie I see that has good writing and is a good like, what do you what do you always say about the movies? The logistics make sense. Mm-hmm. will be right. the first one. His movies are almost as bad as Stephen King movies, and I know that probably touched some nerves. I know, I know. Stephen King's books are the better, mm-hmm. and they, they're so large, they get condensed down in the movie. There's nothing you can do about it. I'm telling you, the worst movie I've ever seen in my life was Sleepwalkers. That movie was written by Stephen King. And then mm-hmm. the second worst is The Wrangler, which is Wes Craven, who's another guy who gets all this credit. Because what? One Freddy Krueger movie was actually good, so now everything he shovels out since then is acclaimed and and I, I stand corrected Bon Jovi starred in Vampires 2 Los Muertos which is a John Carpenter movie mm-hmm. that's the worst movie I've ever seen in my life and the second buddy, thing is, buddy did, but he did but he did Halloween he did he did Halloween though John Carpenter did Halloween and that's why he's 
He's raved about. He's one hit wonder, and then he gets to make all this other garbage gets greenlit. He ain't all mm-hmm. that. John John Carpenter's Vampires with James Woods is a good movie. So mm-hmm. I thought, all right, Vampires too. That's when I started realizing. Wait a minute. Every time I see John Carpenter's name attached to a movie, it ends up being hot garbage. And they live. This. We're mm-hmm. being honest, and for me, it's two guys. If Roddy Piper. Keith David aren't in this movie. I ain't mm-hmm. watching it to the end. I'm going to tell you that now. I start watching this movie, and because of those two, I finished it. Because it's not good. But no. it's guilty pleasure. Of it's, course. It's good enough. It, it is good enough. It's a guilty pleasure. It's a cult classic. We have potential. I wouldn't call it untapped. I think, you know, when you saw it originally in 1988, I think people were critiquing that as a starring role and we were ju- and they were judging him. I'm sure I'm sure Siskel and Eber were judging Roddy Piper because they knew him as Hot Rod. They knew the character of Roddy Piper, so they couldn't take nobody could take the wrestler seriously because maybe you couldn't separate the wrestler from the movie itself. So of course, you got a wrestler who already is playing a character, now playing another character. So, you know, he's already at a handicap, number one. Number two, I call it a cult classic is, is because maybe it didn't make the, the kind of money that was supposed to make, that they were expecting to make. But if it's on cable, I'm going to watch it. If, you know, if it's on your streaming devices, you're going to watch it because there's nothing on TV. So it's my guilty pleasure, as you called it. But you know what? Before we even get into this, I said it. And I want you to harp on it for your own maybe political opinions. I say that this movie warns you about the slave mentality in your mind. I mean, like I said, I think people are stuck on being slaves to the Democratic and Republican parties. God bless you if you love Biden. God bless you if you love Trump. I don't like neither. So my glasses are on. But I think people's glasses are either they got the blue glasses for for Democrats or they got the red glasses for for Republicans, they're stuck on what makes them feel comfortable. And we'll talk about it within this movie, but they warned us, TW, they warned us about, you know, corruption. They warned us about the greed. They warned us about everything like this. And yet it's 2020. We're knee deep in this more and we're trying to blame the other side. It's like, you know, it's a funny thing, TW. It's like I read memes about, you know, if the republic if the Republicans are scared of the Democrats ruling the country and enslaving us, then I read another thing that Democrats are worried about Republicans, you know, ruling the country and enslaving us, then why should I vote for either if they both want to enslave me? So right. TW, why don't you expound on that for yourself? Here, they here's the us. deal. Here's the deal. If I could be serious for a second. Be serious. I want a British flag, not a Canadian flag. That was my Lance Armstrong Lance Armstrong, Lance Storm. So here, here's for me. I don't like any politician. I wouldn't hang out with any of them. I think they're all stiffs. I, I want to know how a guy like the senator in my district, Gary Peters, who I see his commercials every five minutes, how the hell he's worth two point five million dollars when they make like seventy grand a year, mm-hmm. maybe a hundred grand a year, right? Right. Obviously, strange going on in Capitol Hill when these dudes go there couple hundred thousand dollars in the bank that they used to run for the job and walk away millionaire so obviously it's blatant they're taking the pay cut now maybe this won't be popular to a lot of people listening to this but i'm going to tell you first of all i've always voted republican i always will but not locally locally i listen to both sides vote for the person the reason is because i don't think the democratic policies work for 300 million people i think they work for smaller pockets it's got a good Mm heart behind it it doesn't mm-hmm. work when you have to have everyone pulling their weight because with 300 and something million people everyone doesn't pull their weight in a, in a right. village everyone is or you're getting your ass whooped but i've always voted for the one that takes less money from me so that i can do what i want to do with my money i want to give more to the salvation army bucket ringer i can because i got more to give because they took less from me but mm-hmm. here's the reality they're not much different than from each other you don't no. ever hear um, with the exception of maybe abortion, which, again, usually the other side's bringing it up. It's not one side saying it and the other. You don't ever see someone go on stage and say, I'm for the death penalty, and the other one says, I'm against the death penalty. What they do is one of them picks three things to say they're for, and the other one picks three different things to say they're for. They don't mm-hmm. say they're against, ever. Right. 
You just have to have the other one say, I'm for abortion. They want you to not have one. It's a woman's body. They don't ever mm-hmm. say words about it. But this guy's telling you they do. And same thing with identity politics. But the real problem is they all answer to the same place. I'm putting on mm-hmm. a Billy Ray Valentine and tennis. Big Farm. Big Farm is the reason. They're the aliens from this movie that are running mm-hmm. everything. Big Farm. And Absolutely. they both take money from them. They both want their cut of whatever they can get. You know, I get to a point while, like, okay, so you know generic drugs, right? Mm -hmm. The reason generic drugs are made is because they're more affordable to people like us who aren't fucking ballers, who can just go buy $350 prescription for 10 pills, um, which is on the low end, by the way, of the expensive shit. So you got Mm -hmm. the generics. The reason there's a window of two years or whatever the window is where no one else can make a generic version of that drug is because they let the pharmaceutical companies make their money back by selling that miracle drug for two years uncompeted against. Mm-hmm. You, you can't buy an alternative to... We'll use Viagra for an example. It was discovered on accident. It was supposed to be for heart m- medicine. They found out when, when the professor took it, he's running around with a third leg for a couple hours, and they're like, whoa, package it. That shit and became a, and become a porn star. Mm-hmm. Right. Gay porn. It's not even covered on your insurance, <laughs> mm-hmm. right? Your insurance doesn't cover Viagra. And then if you get it on the cheap end, it's $25 a pill. So again, you get 10 pills, it's 250 bucks. Now you can get it for a dollar pill from a generic, you know, uh, they're called compound pharmacies, whatever, because their patent has expired. Mm-hmm. I understand to a point, okay, they got to recoup their losses. But are you going to sit here and look me in the eye and tell me they ever lost a dime on Viagra? I don't know. We paid for it. Billions. And exactly. We, we paid, paid for the research, it. Right. Not, not them. So I just think it's absurd that there's a window of two years or whatever the window is where you can't make a competitive drug. Like Viagra is a bad example because it's not to save a life. But this Narcan stuff, mm-hmm. they're giving it for free to drunk junkies passed out in the street. But then you or me have a little kid who's allergic to something that needs it to save their life because some kid brought some peanut butter to school. 300 bucks, 300 bucks, mm-hmm. unless the out ambulance the, gets called. And then you're the still window. paying 300 bucks, right? So it's, mm-hmm. it's just Big Farm runs this country. Big Farm is the aliens from they live. And the corporations are the aliens also. So everything all comes intertwined with this movie. So you know what? We're going to say our spiel. And, of course, me and TW are going to give you a little 2020 warning again. So wait for that later, Reflection Nights. But we're going to go in knee deep into this movie, which was released on during Thanksgiving holidays, TW, November of 1988. So, you know, the funny thing is that Rowdy Piper, you know, technically, quote unquote, retired from the WWF after WrestleMania 3. Of course, during that time, because there was that window that he shot two boobies. He shot Body Slam and he shot. Uh, what you would call it, they live. So, and I think Body Slam came out first at, at the end of '87, and of course, you know, we'll we'll talk about that in the future at the movies episode. But we want to get knee deep into this one here. They live. The warning. This is the blueprint warning for every reflection act. You know, the seven listeners we have, forward this to seven more people. For and let them forward this to seven more people. We are warning you because 2020 and 2021 and beyond. This could be the last days, and this could be your last (laughs) podcast. So anyway, let's enjoy it here, TW. Now, the funny thing about this movie, you know, with the the concept is very generic. You know, it's like it's like uh, what Roddy Piper was a drifter. He came into Los Angeles County as a drifter. We don't we don't know his backstory. We don't know if he left a wife, if he had kids. We just know he was a drifter. And the funny thing was. Do, do you remember his name? I never remembered him, nobody calling him his name. Not at all. Yeah. I don't think I know Keith David's name either. So the, the funny Hell. thing is the, the funny thing I, I, I looked at this is and they said that Roddy Piper's name, and this is funny, I guess John Copper was trying to be funny, since he's a drifter with no name, no social security number, no nothing, his name was get this, Nada. Nada. That would be explained why we didn't know his name. Right. So, you know, he's a drifter coming in. I got in. my own tools. 
So, you know, you look at this. Yeah, he's got his own tools. He got the construction job. He meets the black dude, Keith David. You know, they form a little bond. And, and the funny thing here, T.W., look at the analogies. We talk about, you know, Republicans and Democrats. You know, we don't know the political landscape of they live. So we just, you know, we just know it's bipartisan corruption. It doesn't matter who. But we're not going to get into that just yet. But we see that, you know, it, it's funny for Los Angeles County. I was, I've been to Los Angeles. Have you been to Los Angeles? I have. So we, you know that area they call Skid Row. You know, the, the lo- it's like an invisible line. Once you know you're in that, you know you're in Skid Row. So I don't know if this was Skid Row, but it was funny that in Los Angeles County, there was this area that looked like, you know, a building was torn down and it was just a vacant lot. Yeah, it was a vacant lot. It was a vacant lot full of tents. It was tenement complexes, you could call it. And, you know, these are people who can't pay their rent and all that stuff. So, you know, life imitates art. Because back in the 80s, during the Reaganomics era, TW, you know this, and and I know this very well, you know, there was the homelessness crisis. Now, if there was no social media, they blamed this all on Reagan and Reaganomics. This was very, this is, you know, mainstream media, liberal media, I'll give them the, the, the same. It's the same. Right. It's the same. But they blame <laughs> Ronald Reagan for Reaganomics. And right. and you saw it, whether it was, you know, it, whether it was actors or whatever, you just saw the homeless crisis. They blame this on Ronald Reagan. What say you about at least, you know, life imitating art? Because that, that's what it was, really. That was I don't know if John Carpenter is a liberal, but maybe the way he was trying to visually yes, show it. Well, I'm just, I'm just, I'm being objective here. What say you? That town still exists in San Francisco, and Pelosi's running it. Uh, Mm -hmm. People shit in the streets, and they leave it there, and they do whatever. That town's always going to exist. California has been that way since the '60s. You know, you know why? Do you know why they have such a homeless problem? Why? Songs. Welcome to the jungle, and then Fallen Angel by Poison. Welcome to the jungle. Obviously, Guns and Roses. Mm-hmm. It's all about people in Pittsburgh and Detroit and, and Bombay, New Jersey and, and Boston, Massachusetts. They all hop on a one-way ticket on a Greyhound to California to be a star and they end up homeless, sticky, broke, and alone. And that's mm-hmm. what that is, is the overflow. A lot of them in the 60s lived on the beach. But what happens? California politicians, again, in this case, mostly liberal, but that's, I would do the same thing. They don't want their beaches flooded with homeless people, so they sweep them out of there so that you and I come to visit California. We can get on the beach and not feel like we're going to get mugged while we're there. And mm-hmm. they just shimmy them all over to this one spot. So it's not Reagan's fault. It's not Pelosi's fault. It's not. It's the American dream's fault for people that go, not Dusty Rhodes, for going there and not making it. <laughs> and it's also both of their faults. You can't mm-hmm. blame one and not the other. Right. Because for all the shit they talk about each other, neither one of them changes things when they fucking hand the baton off and the other one takes power. It's the mm-hmm. same shit. It's the right. same shit. Those people, and here's the bottom line, and this is sad, those people contribute less to our society in the minds of a politician, not mine, mm-hmm. than dead people, because dead people vote Democrat. Well, the homeless of course. don't vote at all. <laughs> they, they will. They'll vote Democrat if you give oh. them a chance and oh, if you give them a free meal. Oh, no. Yeah, exactly. But that's what it is, man. P- California is full of people who came there to live the dream and did not live it. Not, not everybody's going to go way back. And then they got and even they got they got nowhere to go when they come back. So they, I'm going to tell you right now, I make this joke all the time. If there's every day where I'm homeless, I, I'm in Michigan. That's the top of the states. Mm-hmm. I am going to start walking my fat ass down 75 south until I land somewhere warm. And that's where I'm going to be homeless. I sure the fuck ain't doing it here. It's cold as shit in the winter mm-hmm. here, and I see people on the side. It's it's heartbreaking, man. It's it's it it's, is, and it's it's been my whole life. It doesn't matter who's governor, it doesn't matter who's president. These people are forgotten, and it's sad. And it's it's, and you know, this is the liberal part of me. I always say this: I'm a liberal human being. I'm just mm-hmm. a conservative in politics because of <laughs> financial reasons. Hence, but, why I call because, you the yes, con- yes. I call you the conservative so, liberal. So when I every time I see them build new subdivisions, the first thing I think is, okay, when these people move into these subdivisions, they got to be moving out of somewhere else. And then mm-hmm. someone's going to move in there who's now moving up from their lot in life to whatever these people left behind. Somewhere there's an empty house where you can start throwing homeless people in there. And at some point, when is someone going to do that? They just don't. 
It's pathetic. They can't make a profit off of it right now. Exactly. There you go. It gives them nothing. Right. So that that's from it. That's and the that's symbolism. Why, that's why John Bon Jovi is my favorite liberal. Does he get in the microphone and talk shit? He goes out and does shit. That dude is deep into human habitat for humanity, and that dude helps people on the homeless mm -hmm. eat. He helps them get homes and and. That's what I like is when people put their money where their mouth is or at least put their hands and feet to use to help people out. If I didn't bust my ass working all the time, I wasn't tired when I got home, I, show me. I, I'll help. Show me. Take me somewhere. I'll help mm -hmm. because I just don't understand. I mean, I when I drive by a homeless guy and I got no money and I feel bad that I can't even give him five bucks, I don't know how rich people drive by him and don't even look twice. It's 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 heartbreaking, man. It's, it's absolutely horrible, but – you got me on my rant. I, I just, you have to know California is always going to have that, whether someone does something about it or not. And speaking of which, it's, it's the most vocally liberal crowd of all is in California. So it's kind of odd. All those celebrities live there talking shit about politics. Don't go out there and adopt a homeless guy or family for that matter. Not just right. one person, a family. And, 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 and again, this is the symbolism that we see here in they live. So, you know, we look at, you know, Again, it's their own skid row. It's their own tenement complex, whatever you want to call it. But then Nada, a.k.a. Roddy Roddy Piper, discovers a priest and another white dude going into this vacant lot or a church. And he discovers that this priest or, or this scientist is, is – this is Wik WikiLeaks before WikiLeaks was cool, <laughs> T.W., they are trying to warn the citizens of Los Angeles County that something is wrong, that their people are taking over. You know, it's it's funny because, again, we have to combine 2020 with what John Copperdo was warning us about. There is weak. You know, people laughed at conspiracy theories back in the 60s or the 70s or the 80s. Do you remember, T.W., when people like in the 80s or in the early 90s said, the government's watching us, man. I mean, they look were. out for the government. Big Brother's watching us. And, people, and, 90, and I would say 90% laughed at that person. Now we're in 2020, T.W., and now those conspiracy theorists are laughing at the people that laughed at them. So it's a big ha-ha, I told they you so. Wrong. They were part wrong because it's not – government mm -hmm. it's big business is watching us either either way but the conspiracy theorists the are fuck? laughing at right okay. but that's the, that's the that's the symbolism of people you know closing their eyes in, of the world because it doesn't affect them tw so you know nada is looking at this he, he sees that there's this box full of glasses and and this i wish i think when i was a kid and even Look, and T.W. is wearing those same kind of shades. Don't you wish you had those kind of glasses so you could see the truth right now in 2020? You see could look bullshit. at Joe Biden. You, you look at Joe Biden and see he's an alien or a lizard person. You could look at Hillary Clinton being, you know, a lizard person or even Donald Trump as a lizard person. So, oh, you know, <laughs> so finally, you know, as the as the police, you know, take out the first skid row, so to speak. Roddy Piper has a box full of glasses. And of course, T.W., what say you that he discovers the truth? You know, that's one of the most iconic scenes is when he puts on the glasses oh. and and life changes. Your life changes when you see the billboards, when you see the magazines, when you see the TV guy telling you, obey, listen, conform, reproduce. I mean, what say you if you the saw one thing I didn't get about it is. With the glasses, you see all that. Wouldn't that make you not want to wear the glasses? Like, that, that's what I'm asking you. What it's, what it's, I believe what it's symbolizing is you don't realize that's what those things are, but when you put the glasses off, that's mm -hmm. what they're telling you subconsciously is to obey. You're seeing the subconscious and not the, the actual commercial or whatever the case may be. It, you know, uh, all in all, uh, the leader of the... What did you call that place? The Tentament? The guy that goes yeah. in the church. That mm -hmm. guy was a pretty good actor. He did he did some good acting. Uh, I know. I got his name. I, I think I got his name here. Let me see. Uh, Peter Jason. He was Gilbert, one of the leaders of the, res the resistance, yeah. quote unquote. He, he was all right. But I think the, the blind pastor, not a very good actor. But his, his thing was 
he was he was lip syncing to the sound coming out of the radio mm-hmm. the obey the listen or whatever but it was the resistance but you understood why because he was in on it and helped him make the video so mm-hmm. but at the time i thought he was being possessed or whatever the case may be the funny thing is i i watched this whole movie all the way through the other day um for the, the show i don't remember the ending when I was a kid, I, I must not have finished watching this again. <laughs> you know, I, I thought I watched it, but the end, <laughs> but my favorite part was seeing Keith David in it. I didn't even realize, I, I did not know who was in that movie other than Roddy Piper. And the chick, the mm-hmm. main chick, or, 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 she's not really that much in it. She's in it in a couple different parts. She's Eva Lynn from the He-Man movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, she is. Yeah, that so, with Dolph with Dolph Lundgren, that was a great uh, Evil Lynn from from the Bat. Yeah. Uh, I was about to say Batman, the He Man movie. So <laughs> you weren't about to. You said Batman. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I can't. I'm drinking. I'm drinking Reflection Ice. So you know that the it, it's really Don't kicking it in right now. So see, so he has the glasses on. So I guess the iconic things is he goes into the the grocery store. He sees all the aliens. He, he sees all these aliens with the glasses on TW. I mean, but you, you notice a, a trend here. Like the people who are re- wearing mink coats, who are businessmen, who you know are more refined are the aliens. So, oh, you know, the, the what was it? The newsstand clerk. He wasn't an alien. The, the checkout uh, boy, he wasn't an alien. But you could tell. It was tell. the have and the have nots. It was, of course, it was the half of the half nuts. It's always been the war. It's always been the war. It always will be. If I can agree with some Hollywood director, I will agree about that. But here's the funny part. He's what? a half. John mm-hmm. Carpenter's a half. So it's funny. He, it's, it's the old saying. The guy pointing one finger at you is pointing three fingers at himself. Remember that always. Mm-hmm. So let me ask you this. I mean, what say you with the acting abilities of a first time, well, not a, a first time wrestler getting this starring role. What, what say you? At least at this point, discover you know the acting ability of discovering the truth, quote unquote. I will say this: it's not going to sound like much of a compliment, but he didn't embarrass himself. I think he mm-hmm. did all right. I think they did the same thing here that Hogan did in No Holds Barred, where he had canned lines and he just mm-hmm. was fed the lines. And true, right. matter of fact, I had the line wrong. I always thought he said, I'm here to do two things, chew bubble gum and kick ass, and I'm all out of bubble gum. All he said is, I'm here to chew bubble gum and kick ass, and I'm all out of bubble gum. So that's your mm-hmm. Mandela effect, because I know right. he said, I came here to do two things, chew mm-hmm. bubble gum and kick ass, and I'm all out of bubble gum, which is a much better line than, I came here to chew bubble gum and kick ass, and I'm out of bubble gum. That's I, a, I, you know, I, I don't think you're crazy. I think I remember he said, I'm here to do two things. I, I think I remember. in the movie. Yeah. Not in the yeah, movie absolutely. when I watched it. Yeah, absolutely right. You know, there is that but Mandela effect. It, it could be the commercial played that, and then when you saw the movie, it was an edited version, and he didn't do it. And it was so anticlimactic when he did it because he walked into a bank, looked around mm-hmm. like he didn't even know he was in a bank, and just starts popping people, and the one dude disappears, and it's just – it's so cheesy. Like – Mm-hmm. That's what I mean. Your your logistics is what you used all the last two weeks. The, mm-hmm. it, it just Piper would have been shot dead the second he walked in there with eight guns strapped to his back and a handgun uh, in his hand. So uh, uh, of course, but now I mean dead on arrival. So yeah, he should be dead on arrival. Not he should have the bump he took. Right. That that's the thing. Now let's talk about at least here the fight scene that he had with the alien cops because what the logistics came out of here, you know. James Bond, uh, let's say Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, Rambo, Sylvester Stallone, even Jean-Claude Van Damme, you know, they fought like action movie stars. But now you see Rowdy Piper in, in this horror, thriller, whatever you want to call it. For some strange reason, John Carpenter says you got to fight like a wrestler. You got to do a clothesline. You got to do a backdrop. Why, T.W., why? Do this to us, wrestling fans. He didn't do that in the police fight. In the police fight, he was doing headbutts and punches. It was he did a close. No, no, he did it. 
He did a clothesline. Belly to back suplex, the gut wrench mm-hmm. suplex. Right. All that was done to Keith David when they were having their any which way but loose fight, like Clint Eastwood in that movie with that dude where they're buddies, but they beat the shit out of each other to see who the toughest guy is. That's a great movie. He beat his mustache off of his face. I remember being like horrified as a child by that. Every which way but loose, any, any which way you can. I don't know what the hell. Probably before mm-hmm. your time. Those no. Are movies. I, the Kimbo Slice's kinda, origin. I kind of remember that, but again, TW, I mean, as wrestling fans, should we be embarrassed? Should we should we be rejoiced that you know they're doing a, a, a fight scene that we can recognize and, and not try? And he's not trying to be like a you know all the other action movie stars. I got or would it, it. I would have been is. real? It doesn't seem real to us. Vince said, "I'll let you use them." We're getting some heat on whether or not wrestling is real or fake. So I need you to throw some wrestling moves in there. So somebody goes, "See, people fight like that outside the ring too," and they'll think wrestling's real for a little bit more, long time. But you know what? That actually makes a lot of sense. I don't know if Vince McMahon did it, but I think, you know, of course, I don't know what year it was before, you know, people, quote unquote, found out about the, you know, the choreograph of wrestling. But of course, it it helps out for the movie They Live that he did incorporate the clotheslines. He incorporated the belly to back suplex on Keith Davis. So before we get into the, you know, we did the fight scenes reflection. So, you know what? T.W. mentioned this, that Meg Foster is the woman involved with Roddy Piper. You know, Roddy Piper's horny. You know, Roddy Piper, <laughs> he's a drifter, but he's a man. He's horny. So for some strange reason, out of all this stuff, at the, the, the day that he has had, you know, being in a bank, being in the grocery store, seeing all these aliens, trying to get away from aliens. And, of course, the biggest thing about wearing these glasses for hours and upon hours on end, you get a vicious migraine. So he needed... To get, lay low. And of course, Meg Foster, Evil Lynn from the He Man movie series, is introduced here in the parking lot. So, you know, he, he she's not like uh, well, Joan Severance from No Holds Bar. She's not, you know, a, a video vixen. She has that right. she, she has that classy appeal in the she professor's humble. Eyes. She has sexy eyes. I, I'm just I look at her as that class. You know, the, the woman in the streets, but the freak in the sheets, DW. So what say you about the about Meg Foster? I, I would say that. And it's funny because um, I, uh, I thought she looked familiar. She kind of looks like Kirstie Alley to me when she's in Star Trek, um, mm-hmm. when she's a Vulcan. But she's got <laughs> hair now instead of whatever. So she kind of reminded me of that. She had that weird look. She reminds me of, like, those 80s models that became actresses. And I don't know if that's what she was. Um, but then I thought, man, I don't remember her in anything else. So while we were sitting here, I wanted to look up to see what Keith David's name was. And I already forgot what it is now. But uh, but then I saw her and I thought, oh, yeah, I want to see what else she was in. Uh, she did a lot of Skinamax movies, it looks like, uh, based on this. But she did, like, guest spots on ER and stuff like that. But um, Skinamax yeah. is good. Never, for, you know, n- never. Uh... Frank. That's funny. Keith David's name's Frank. And his best line ever is. How'd you get the beans above the frame? That's his <laughs> He's Mary's stepdad. Mm-hmm. Well, he had, he had a family. Frank had a family. He had a wife and he had kids. And he was sending his checks to, to his wife and kids. So he had to move to Los Angeles to make money for his family because the factory, you know, shut down wherever he was. You know, Reaganomics, you know, reared its ugly head across the country. So, you know, Roddy Piper needed to lay low, make Foster, you know, off. Well, didn't offer her home. She was forced. She was held hostage against her will. But, you know, a man with a, a migraine who is like passed out, looking like he's drunk. You know, he had the gun, so she couldn't do anything. But then the funny thing was she kicked him out of the house and he and he fell down the hill. She busted him over the head with your wine bottle and then like <laughs> drew him out of the Royal Rumble from the fucking fourth floor side of a mountain. And, and again, he had a migraine. He was tired. This man should have been concussed. He should have he should have had a broken leg or a broken arm, TW. Logistically, I found some fault in that. Do you agree, disagree, or you think or he's a strong dude. He's a wrestler dude. That that you know, he can, you know, he can pass all the pain. I think he just knew how to take a bump. He did the stop <laughs> and roll and then he, you know, did his thing. He tucked and and he took a five point landing like we were taught to do. And I think that's why he made it. But the reality is, the wine battle should have done him in. Mm-hmm. Throw him through the damn window should have done him in. And 
But if you see him land, he does like a somersault roll, tuck and roll. Like he must have some military background, I think, and mm -hmm. he's taught to take it. And then, but the, the even more bizarre of that is the aforementioned fight between him and and Frank. They beat the fuck out of each other, mm -hmm. and in the very next scene, they're all healed up. No, they had they had the they had the black eye. They that had was, the that scratches. That was not the next scene. That was someone coming to talk to them. And no, that's true. Of the next day, lose, <laughs> not a scar, not a cut. Well, they they heal quickly in, on the first hour yeah, or so. Aliens. I think that's they, what the problem. They could be, but you know, again, we don't know what Roddy Piper, aka Nada, is. He, you know, we call him a drifter, but you know what? He knows how to hold a gun, T.W. He knows how to fight. So what you just said makes a lot of sense. He might have been a, a special forces unit. Right. He might have he might have been in Vietnam. He might have done a lot of recon stuff. So do you agree with that assessment or absolutely just, military background? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he ha had to do a lot of things for the government. So maybe that's why he's so like dismissive about it, because he n literally did not want to be a part of this. He did not want to be a part of the resistance. He just wanted to like lay low. Get a couple of dollars and find a place Send to crash. Send it back to Detroit. Send the money back to his family in Detroit. Yeah, that, that was it. So, you know, logistically, you saw that, you know, they were healed up after the fight. And then the day later, you know, they went into the hotel. And, of course, you know, he had to show Frank the truth. And the funny thing is, you know, when you show people the truth, what you know, your life, again, we have to really reiterate this because it goes back into 2020, T.W., when you when you have to force somebody that that truth and then they don't want to listen to you they don't want to believe you and then you you almost have to ram it down their throats no homo but anyway they, you just have to, <laughs> you just have to show them the truth tw and they finally they finally get on your side and say i can't believe you was right i mean that's a culture shock i mean everything that was important to you is not important anymore what say you tw before we try to delve into more of the the stuff I think since they tried so hard to do tongue in cheek humor in there, he should have said, "If you you could have fucking saved us a couple ass whoopings if you'd have just put the glasses on ten minutes ago." But they didn't do it, and he could have went touche, and then they could have went in the next scene healed up like they did. Mm -hmm. It's insanity how much they beat the shit out of each. Other. I like what I did like about their fight was they made it out like neither guy won like even when it looked like he it was a, it, won, it was a draw it was a draw he i don't care dragged himself over to take a breather and then piper he did a drop toe hold on him i think he had him in a submission um it was just it was no holds it was it was no holds barred part 1 the prequel yeah. it was it was, it was battle black of the guy and a white guy <laughs> it was battle of the tough guys yeah, yeah. and um but yeah it's just I, I, I like that neat like they were equals. You know what I mean? Like, all right, look, mm -hmm. you fucked me up, I fucked you up, let's go save the world. And I know we're out to the ending, but the ending uh, that that's that's a whole yeah. other we'll, we'll, we'll say. story at the end. But you know what, before we even get into the, the resistance part and all and even even into the ending, let let's let's uh, pay attention right now to the aliens, TW. You know, they had drones that no one saw. Unless you wore the glasses. They had an all points bulletin for Roddy Piper that no one, no one knew except, you know, the aliens. And if you had the watch, you had that. Yep. If you had the Apple watch, you know, I'm trying to be funny here. If you had the Apple watch <laughs> that, you know, that you could go wherever you want to go. TW, again, you know, we got to shift a little bit in, in the movie. There was a homeless guy in Skid Row that sold his soul. You know, people will sell their souls to the devil because if they promise you money, they promise you a nice house, they promise you hookers, nine out of ten people are going to take the deal. Or nine out of ten people will take the deal because they have a family, they have a child, they want them, they want, well, they want something better for their children, TW. What say you about the, the decision to join the, the dark side, so to speak? That guy was Waylon Jennings, man. I it was funny because he looked absolutely homeless of the homeless mm -hmm. when he was at the campground or whatever. The and then all of a sudden he's what's that comedian? Uh, that drinks the scotch. He does the blue collar comedy with those dudes. Oh, uh, something white. I think Ron White. Ron White. All of a sudden mm -hmm. he's Ron White. Hey, 
You got just got to dress the part now that you can afford it. it but mm-hmm. again, more more loopholes in the story because this guy's just getting a full tour of the whole place with two dudes that no one knows who they are. <laughs> and then finally, one guy goes. This is the best part of the movie, by the way. Best line, everything. The guy goes. You got any credentials? And then Piper and Frank both go right here and shoot him. And it was like, Mm -hmm. that was money. And then Mm -hmm. another loophole. They got there by the watch, making a hole in the ground. Waylon Jennings disappears. There's no hole for them to jump in and follow him. So just some weird shit. It's weird shit. But again, I got to ask you the question about temptation and uh, and about the the choice. I I would say at some point, if you can't beat them, join them becomes a thought. <laughs> and, mm-hmm. and I will say this. Of all the aliens with, with the masks, you know, w- you know with, without the glasses, you don't see that they're not aliens. Mm-hmm. They were all friendly. They were all just happy to be there. They, were, mm-hmm. like, they weren't fucking with people. The cops were right. the assholes, but only when people were trying to, what was going on, right? Like, hey, mm-hmm. stop it. Just leave it be. And so, big picture, it's wrong. It's has and have nots. It's the thing I've been preaching for 20 years. It's not Republican mm-hmm. or Democrat. You know, basically, they shoot themselves in the ass because if the Republicans are for the rich, then every single Democratic governor or politician would vote Republican because they're all rich. And so, it's, 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 mm-hmm. it's, which one is it? Are they for the rich or are they not for the rich? And we both know. Every celebrity, every politician, everybody who has enough money to get a good uh, tax guy does not pay taxes the way you and I do. They might pay more than us, but mm-hmm. they have loophole, loophole after loophole that they and they get, get and they get credit for the hundred percent taxes they pay initially. They get something out of it. So that's the right. one thing that nobody even right. says they. That's the whole spiel reflection. Ice, you know, these rich people or these people making five hundred thousand dollars or more a year, they'll pay more and they'll bitch and moan and complain on Twitter, but yet they don't tell you that they got accountants that will give you a, a rebate. They'll give you a refund, and you'll get that back that back in tenfold. So that's the that's the problem here. Do you know, do you know who's in my lifetime? I don't know if eventually they did, but this is for years. This is before Trump probably before Obama. I think it was when Clinton was in office, but I think it still happened when Bush was in office. GE at one time was the largest company in the world. Mm-hmm. They paid zero dollars in taxes every year wow. because of donating, because of government stuff, whatever the case may be, General Electric paid zero dollars in taxes every year for however many years. I think probably still to this day, I don't even know if they're still around, but mm. they did not pay taxes at all, not like seven hundred fifty dollars, like people keep saying. President Trump paid zero, mm-hmm. and it was because of loopholes and write-offs. And so, but here's the thing: that same company is giving Bill Clinton money. He's giving you know Mitchell Bush money. money. Yeah. They're giving Bush money. They're giving every politician money. That's the thing that cracks me up. Is they're, they're they're both sitting there saying special interest groups and big business owns Republicans and big farm owns Democrats and blah blah blah. They all fucking get paid by somebody. Of oh, course. You get, and, uh, you get insurance for the rest of your life. That right there saves you about $1,400 a month that you and I are going to pay if we don't have a job. And we got to mm-hmm. pay for insurance. It's right. insanity. It is insanity, and yet the wheels keep turning. And, you know, the next. I got to finish your question, though. But okay, go ahead. At that point, if I'm sitting in a lawn chair looking at a damn TV that keeps going on the fritz, and someone comes up to me and says, hey, man, you want in? Fuck yeah, I want in. Sign me up. As long I as I'm will. not hurting anybody. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like if I, if all I got to do is talk other people into being cool with it. I'm, I'm your guy. And, and, that's, and that's the funny thing. Even in this movie, you don't know what the aliens want. Like, do you remember like V? Do you ever remember that show V? They wanted they wanted to eat the humans eventually. Right. They want they wanted them for food. And they live. They we don't know. To train what, them. They needed to train them how shit worked. And then they were going to eat us. Right. But in they live, you don't know what they want. Either they want our, uh, they want our atmosphere, they want our minerals, they want our, you know, whatever the case may be. You know, maybe they want our plutonium. I don't know, TW. Do you know what the aliens wanted in they live from us? Because really, it, 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 it didn't make no sense. It was it was interstellar travel. That was what I saw. 
that they could have offered technology, but yet, you know, the resistance, those damn Republicans, you know, those that resistance with the Republicans, they don't want to go into the future. They want to stay to the Flintstones. That's the problem. They want they were infringing on our freedom, but then the aliens were trying to offer you the future interstellar travel and you didn't want to take it. That's the thing I got. And the funny thing is when the resistance had their meeting after all this was, was fun, they would complain. This is even smaller than our last meeting, you know, right? They, right. The, because they were disorganized. They, you know, this wasn't Antifa reflection. Ice. This wasn't BLM. They were so disorganized. They were not funded by George Soros. They were, fu- <laughs> I don't know who they, they were funded by, but they were very disorganized and they were trying, they were even trying to tell their members, go to work, pay your taxes, you know, go to, the, go to the supermarket, do your normal stuff. Hot, you got to hide in plain sight. And they did not want to listen. They just had their, they had their six shooters. And they said, let's just, you know, shoot. Let's just, you know, kill them all. But you didn't know who to kill, you know, without even with your, without the glasses or your contact lenses or whatever the case may be. And the aliens took out the, the, the last remaining skid row resistance. And then the only two that survived was nada and Frank. And because the watch worked for some strange reason, they got into the hole. And, and the funny thing is you don't even know how they even got there. You don't even know where these other humans, the, the, the traitors, quote unquote, TW, where did they come from? How did they get there? You know, they, they must've had to watch too, because this is the ultimate club that everybody wants to join, but no one knows how to, how to, you know, be initiated. Piper did say, he thinks they're under the city, which would make sense that it's just opening a hole and you fall mm-hmm. down into the uh, to the gimmick basement and then you work your way out of there. But they ended up at the TV studio. Right. It was connected, but we don't know how, how connected it was because, you know, supposedly now we got to go logistically here. Reflection nights. The sewers are disgusting. This was a pretty clean sewer, TWs. <laughs> so. So, you know, this was an underground tunnel. This was like um, the under, if anybody ever saw Jesse Ventura's, uh, I forgot the show that he did, but it was one of those truth telling series, TW, that, you know, the gov- the big government. Conspiracy are, theory. The, those conspiracy theory shows. I know the town in the Ozarks where the government created an underground city. So I know where that's located. So that that oh, yeah. that's what it, that's what it looked like. You know, there's an underground city in Arizona. There's an underground city in in Colorado, and there's an underground city underground in the city? old underground city for the the privileged, the haves, like you said, TW. So when, when the sh- shit goes down, right? When the shit hits the fan, only a select few will get access to this underground city. And Jesse Ventura exposed where this was located. You even they even showed you. They even snuck in. They risked being shot. That's how that's how bad it was. But anyway, they get into the underground city, and you even talked about what's the dude's name? Whalen, the the homeless guy, gives he them like the. Waylon Jennings, yeah. He looked like Whalen Jennings, and uh, he gave he gave him a tour, and no alien security guard wanted to stop him. No alien security guard said, "You know what? The you you only ask for a press pass." But this guy, this homeless guy, who turns to the dark side, has so much access. He. He's almost like a leader. That that's logistically does not make sense. So right. that's the problem. That's, that's the first problem. Hog. Yeah, he's not boss hog. And of course, here's where the the climatic ending starts because you know Roddy Piper and Frank are shooting. You know the security guards. They discovered that the that the TV studio is connected. And of course, Roddy Piper is trying to find the girl that he's wants to fuck, Holly Meg Foster. And for some strange reason, they're connected. So, you know, for me, TW, I would put two and two together. If this is, if the TV studio is here and the girl that was supposed to be in the resistance, we knew that she worked at a TV studio, I would have to take a step back. But of course, you know, when you're horny. He 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 did that earlier. He didn't trust her earlier. And then she talked him into trusting her. And then Mm -hmm. she bonked him in the head with the bottle. Right. When she shows up at the meeting, all is forgiven. Mm Mm-hmm. And I know what you're about to you're about to talk about a major plot point. Right. Uh, he bumps into her when everyone else is dead. Them two get away. Don't know what happened to her. And now here she is walking around aimlessly inside the hallway of the studio. Mm-hmm. So she's a she's a great agent for all the aliens here, reflectionites. And of course, they're trying to find 
the satellite dish that's beaming, let's say a force field, I guess you could say, that, that covers, you know, the aliens in darkness, that they, they, they can camouflage themselves, that you don't see their true identities reflectionized. Right. So right. they're working to get to the roof. And of course, Meg Foster turns into Evil Lynn and shoots Frank. Why does the black guy gotta be dead in the horror movies, man? They, Did they shoot either... her, shoot him? Yes, she shot him in the head. See that? I thought he just disappeared off camera and then he no. turned around and saw her pointing. No, she shot him in the head because he trusted her because Roddy Piper co-signed her. He co-signed the coochie and you can't do that. You know, when that that's the problem here. So once you Always get to the-, on the family man, Right. So once you get to the roof, TW, it's Rowdy Piper, it's Meg Foster, it's a helicopter full of alien uh, policemen, and of course Rowdy Piper gets shot by Meg Foster, gets shot by the by the cops in the helicopter, but he still had two bullets left to shoot Meg Foster and to shoot one shot. Was it one shot or two to shoot the dish? I think it was one, and then it exploded twice. One good shot from a small gun, but anyway, the the dish explodes and the truth comes out, and every every human being is scared or pissed or whatever. And of course, the the greatest ending is a woman is fucking an alien, and he, and all yeah. he says, and he what's says, up, what the, what's the problem, baby? And then it right. just and and it just ends right there. So you know, John Carpenter did not even give a conclusion. Really, he just he just wanted to expose the truth. And the the ending could be whatever you make it. I guess the I guess what he's trying to say, if as being a liberal, or whatever his whatever his agenda was, TW, in my eyes, is like the future is is like the Terminator theme. The future is what you make of it. We gave you the truth. What are you gonna do with the truth in front of you, TW? What say you about how you perceive the ending in your own in, with your own eyes? I think it's it stops 1984 from happening because it has elements that they're heading towards 1984 where you just work. And because remember, we're recruiting workers. We're recruiting workers. That's the whole theme throughout the whole thing. And it was almost bringing back slavery, if you if you will. Like that's what the TV was trying to tell everybody. The, the resistance when they were breaking into the TV uh, signal. Um, but the way it ends. All it did was leave me wondering, okay, now you see these fuckers everywhere. Are we to believe there's not that many of them? Because why else mm -hmm. would they hide? Right? Mm -hmm. So my thought is there ain't that many of them. Now that everyone sees them, we can round them up and get back to normal. You know, that's the only thing I get out of it to get mm -hmm. any closure. Because throughout the entire movie, I felt like there was a fucking billion of them. Like you couldn't right. tell who was one and who wasn't one. And when he walked in the bank, it was usually 50-50. Half the people were alien, half the people weren't. And I'll say mm -hmm. this earlier. I started to say it, but I felt like some of the people he was shooting didn't deserve to get shot. They were just right. They were just happy to be here, just regular people at the bank working a job and mm -hmm. getting money in the bank, and he's just popping these people for fun. And it's like, man, they didn't even do that's, anything. That's the itchy trigger Republicans. That's the right-wingers, TW. That's what it was. <laughs> They, you know, again, they don't want interstellar travel. They don't are want the future. Me, are you telling me the Bloods and the Crips are Republicans? Yes. Because they got itchy trigger fingers, too. Of course. Chicago, if you, if, if, if you shoot. going to shoot you for looking at their girlfriend's ass. Yes. Because they shoot what they don't. Under, they shoot what they don't understand. That's what it is. Progress. Progress is democratic. Now, nah, I'm just kidding. Reflectionize. I, <laughs> but anyway. But and the name it, of that show is Jesse Ventura. It's called Conspiracy Theory with Jesse Ventura. Yeah, so that's where I discovered the underground series with that. And before we even close out, TW, this movie, the They Live, was based on the 1963 short story Eight O'clock in the Morning by Ray Nelson. So you know, this wasn't a, an original thought. This was, you know, this was a reboot. Of a short story, so you know it for for John Carpenter. So he stole it from somebody. You know, it was it was plagiarism. <laughs> so that's the liberal way, of course. That's ah, ain't and no liberal. And give it to you, bullshit. He's not hey, that's not a liberal way. That's a well. That's that's a that's a halfway. Rob Peter to pay Paul it is the liberal way. That that's that's the uh, halfway, not the liberal way, not the dem not the Republican way. That's the halfway. You know, we're the half nots here, T W. But anyway. 
you know, no holes barred. You didn't like TW. Ready to rumble. You love because you went to the theaters drunk. How did you like they live? Again, it sounds like I didn't like it, but I did. I just, I, I think the same thing can be said when I said it about No Holds Barred. If mm-hmm. you're watching it, it's just escape. That movie is fucking two hours solid, like two hours and six minutes long. If you're watching it to escape from reality, it's worth watching. If you're watching it because you think Cisco and Eber give it two thumbs up in a circle, you're going to be disappointed. <laughs> like, I, I always say this that rotten apple shit. Mm-hmm. And critics, I feel like in my lifetime, the ones I've paid attention to, the movies that Rotten Apple and Cisco and Ebert and Roper at the Movies and all these other guys, I feel like every movie they've ever told me to go see, I didn't like. And every movie they shit on is some of my favorite shit of all time. I couldn't tell you last time an Adam Sandler movie, probably the Uncut Gems, but those are different people critiquing it now. But every Adam Sandler movie in the 90s got buried. Mm-hmm. Two that I don't like. Waterboy, Little Nicky. I watched them both. They weren't terrible. I can't stand how he talks. If it wasn't for how he talked, I would watch them again and again and again like I do Happy Gilmore and everything else. My point is, would I like those movies in 2020, seeing them for the first time? Absolutely not. But right. when I'm a dumbass 20-something drinking and barely making it to work every day in the 90s watching a movie that's a dude being exactly like me, it's Swingers. Would I enjoy mm-hmm. Swingers if I saw it for the first time in my 40s? Nope. But damn, if I didn't relate to it in my 20s when I saw it. And mm-hmm. these movies are all... I, swingers, I don't think, got destroyed because it was Miramax. If you get Miramax, you're you're critically acclaimed because it's okay. the Weinstein Brothers. But this movie, I don't think... Thrashed by Cisco and Ebert, not deservedly. It's not a great movie, but it's yeah. a fun movie. It's a fun <laughs> movie. It's worth watching. I, however, when you say if it's on cable, you watch it, I would watch it like until I got to leave. I wouldn't mm-hmm. sit down for the full two hours and watch it and not do something else. You, um, you, know, you know when this movie – now, the movie came out in 1988. Now, again, we're heavy into cable TV, TW. If this movie came out in 19 – and the way it was, right? If I know it wouldn't be Roddy Piper, he'd be young. He'd be like 13 years old in 1972 or whatever. But let's say it came out in 1972. Remember the Midnight movies? Yeah. This this movie would have been on midnight, you know, on the midnight showing of movies for at least 10 years from 1972 to 1982. And people would have been dressing in alien gear and they would have been saying the, oh, the true like bubblegum. Right. Like Rocky Hard. They would have been they would have been saying the lines of chew bubble gum and kick ass or dressing like Roddy Piper or whatever. I think it would have been that kind of it would have been that kind of fun movie to watch over and over again during the midnight madness kind of thing. That's the way I look at it. But I like that you tie it to modern day because it is. And and mm-hmm. the reason is it ain't ain't nothing changed. No. It's just now it's a different alien. It's it's our cell phone, man. I mean if mm-hmm. My my thing is is my justification to need my cell phone with me at all times. We've all done it. You leave the house without your phone. You're like, oh no, you can be mm-hmm. ten miles away. You're turning around and coming back for that thing because you ain't going wherever you're going without it. My has always been. I got three kids, man. They need to get a hold of me. I need them mm-hmm. to be able to. Right. Right. Um, I don't have a house phone, but when I was a kid. I was out all day. I didn't give a shit if someone called me. When I came home, I was happy there was a voicemail. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, that girl called. And then I'd call her, and if she didn't answer, I'm like, shit, maybe tomorrow. Now right. we need instant replies. We need. I, I'm guilty of it, too. I, if they don't respond right away, if I see they read my shit and they don't respond to me, I'm mad as hell, and I'm going to talk to a different girl. But the point is, we're all slaves to technology now. And back then, and, and again, it's. I, I, I'm telling you, man, I, I maybe I said this to you when we were off. One day we're going to find out that Disney also owns whichever one owns Disney owns Marvel and all that stuff and then someone else owns everything else one day we're going to find out it's the same owner and they just make it look like it's not a monopoly because yeah. I'm going to tell you right now if correct me if I'm wrong but if people aren't going to the movies like they used to the result isn't raise prices it should be lower prices to get people to come back when you raise it well it, it depends. But no, my point is, 
if they were really in competition, if AMC and, and MJR and all these people were really in competition with each other, why isn't one of them lowering their prices to get you to come there instead? They're always at the same. They're always $12. Mm-hmm. Why wouldn't someone say, fuck them, we're going to charge $10, and we're going to give you your pot for free? Why aren't they doing that? Because they're in it together. Yeah, it is. But, you know, the, the way 2020 is, we just don't know the rules, the rules of engagement. And, you know, what if they were working together for the same common goal like you're saying, but the, the Democrats and the Republicans are, are shortchanging them for another ulterior motive of how to make the money. We're not broke, Reflectionites. The money is just being moved to something else. We're not in debt, Reflectionites. The money is being moved and being redistributed somewhere else. And that's the point. For the last 30 years, I'm going to close this out for all my Reflectionites. For the last 30 years, I don't know, especially for America, you know, I know we got some Reflectionites, you know, like Phyllis Scott Wood in the UK, but it should go for you, Phyllis Scott Wood, because it all plays in the politics of two-party systems, three-party systems. But Every, for 30 years, I don't know, It's like been, there's been like five presidential elections that's been the most important presidential elections in your life. The last five, TW, has been the most important vote. You have to vote for your life. Guess what? In four years, in 2024, it will be still the most important vote for your life. If we didn't yes, get what? it, if Ain't we didn't get it. Change. Right. It should we, change with all of them. Right. If we didn't get it right for the last 30 years, what makes you think we'll get it right in 2020? What makes you think you're going to get it right in 2024? Because we are slaves to the system that we are actually ha- we're, we love. We love the system that we're in. We might bitch and complain, but we're, we love what we're a slave to. So that's the way I'm going to end it here for PWR After Movies Episode 3, They Live. I hope you enjoyed it, Reflection Nights, and I hope you enjoyed our little political commentary here. You, you have to bring 2020 with 1988. John Carpenter, Roddy Piper, Keith David warned us, and we still didn't listen, and we still are blinded to the system that it is. So, TW... For next week, I'm going to pull a curveball on you. I'll try to find this because it's going to be hard. But you know what? We're not going to go to the movies, even though we call ourselves PWR at the movies. But we're going to do an episode. And do you remember Baywatch? Yeah, of course. Do you remember 1995 when Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage and Taskmaster and Big Van Vader and Ric Flair all... Join in on that. the beach. Right. We're going to do, we, we are going to review when WCW tried to go mainstream. We're going to do the Baywatch episode of Bash at the Beach next week to close out PWR at the movies. It's it's so cheesy, but we have to talk about that one at least. And then, mm-hmm. ho- and then hopefully for the next couple of, you know, months after we'll do a special pwr we'll do the wrestler we'll do nacho libre we'll do if you got any uh, ideas or suggestions reflectionites you know demarco john McHugan, phil scott wood down of destruction snx express and track black if you got a movie that we we should talk about leave your comments on the pwr facebook fan page so tw give out those social medias addresses Give out your political information and all that stuff. Yes, that one. It's on YouTube. Hour and fourteen minutes. That's gonna be that's gonna be a great hour and fourteen minutes. You can watch it in the bathroom taking a shit. So give out oh, those social medias. That's a healthy shit. It, um, it's gonna be a good one. The show itself is at PW Reflection on the Twitches. Um, our good man Big Ray is at Big Ray's Ministry on the Twitches. My political one is at Tommy Wonder nineteen. My wrestling one is at the Tommy Wonder. My Facebook is facebook.com backslash Tommy Wonder. And my Instagram is also at Tommy Wonder 19. All right. And shout outs to uh, the prodigal one, the essential one, JB, at P1JB. Uh, watch it. Uh, listen to his shows, The Film Frequency, and the new one. My Brother's Keeper with CEO Hayes and, of course, the, the UFC Cage Theory that he does with Blake Truth on all podcast platforms, so check those out. And, of course, find me on my Twitter at P-R-O-F-P-W-Hustle and also find me on the YouTube numbers 
on the YouTubes at the PW Hustle Networks. Numbers. Well, you know, I don't know if the PW Hustle is going to make it on YouTube, but you know what? If we're still there, you can find us there. So I, that's where I try to do my all of the perspective. So I know at least they, they, they might. Who knows? You know, New Japan hates us. And once you get that copyright strike from New Japan, then Hollywood comes after you. Then everybody comes after you. So you just... You gotta be sitting on the toilet, but probably the the makers of Toto, the the toilet maker, will come after the professor if I do a, a, a an all elite perspective on the toilet, saying I'm copyright infringing on having a a, a product pla- right, a product placement or a, a ban or whatever the case may be. But anyway, we're gonna do the Baywatch Bash at the Beach episode to close out the PWR at the movies. TW, it's been a it's been a pleasure to do the these movies here so you know it's gonna be kind of like you know after halloween i i'm doing wrestling shows again <laughs> i don't know i don't know we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna start doing christmas movies well we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna enjoy this while we can that's what it is it's right. like right. it's like 2020 it's so it's such a it's just a slow year reflection nights we're just enjoying it as we as we go on we take it a day by day which by the way i just got to point out when we did that nxt first episode or impact which was it nxt mm-hmm. and you mean the people, bitched, the people bitched on twitter this is classic travis got in i called uh a track brown is that the one i said is that travis's burner account because <laughs> he was echoing <laughs> travis <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, uh, it, 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 Michael it. Davis, but uh it, it's just uh, who cares who cares like they don't know what it's like to be here and watch no knee pad wrestling it's it's hard it's a hard it, sell it's hard we got it that's why we do the hard work for your reflection night so you can enjoy this here on the pw hustle networks and for that we close out the pwr podcast i'm the professor that's tw saying good night and tw to close out give that epic nelson well, the mandela effect line to close out the show i came here to do two things chew bubble gum and kick ass and i'm all out of bubble gum Good night, Reflectionites.